I'm Gene Grant, back at the line table with this week's panelists. Let's pick up again on the situation in the Albuquerque Public Schools Administration. APS Chief Financial Officer Don Moya filed a whistleblower lawsuit this week, alleging that he was offered the job of Deputy Soup, but the job was taken back by Superintendent uh, Valentino after Mr. Valentino spoke with Governor Susana Martinez and Education Secretary Hannah Scandera. Dr. Valentino denied that he offered the job to Mr. Moya in an interview with the Journal this week. And let me start with uh, Laura, uh, Laura this, on this one. Let me just get the bones of my own understanding here about a whistleblower lawsuit. It, it, this seems like it, it, it's a shotgun blast. There's a lot of accusations we're going to parse out here. Is this a particularly clean whistleblower lawsuit, or is it, is it loaded with stuff that just makes it kind of murky? Well, I think in any claim that you, you know, any claim that gets filed will have a lot of information okay. because, it, you know, it's a broad sort of approach. But the real substance of the whistleblower allegation is that, you know, he was essentially raising an issue with regard to hiring somebody that he felt was not appropriate to be hired. Mm -hmm. And in doing that and raising that um, and, and basically raising alarms and saying this is not somebody who he should hire, mm -hmm. he was then placed on administrative leave mm -hmm. as a result of that. And mm -hmm. that's really the substance of it. There's a lot of other allegations around it which right. I think helped to flesh out his version of this story. A lot of that if it moves through the process you know, could be narrowed down into just the substance of the whistleblower action. Mm -hmm. But ultimately I think, you know, that's up to however APS decides to approach this in, litig in litigation, whether they want to settle mm. or whether they want to, you know, move forward through a process mm -hmm. uh, that includes discovery. And there's, I mean, it's a double-edged sword if they go that route. Mm -hmm. um, do, so, people, do folks, can they keep their jobs while they have a, a whistleblower lawsuit in process? Um, you know, typically, he's on administrative leave right yeah. now, and um, it's unclear whether there's been any additional action. Typically, if somebody's filed something like that, they maintain whatever their their current status is. Gotcha. So whistleblower, under the Whistleblower Act, you know, you can't um, add additional retaliation. So any action that they take, like removing him, could be seen as retaliation mm -hmm. under that Whistleblower Act. So mm -hmm. typically, they will be left in whatever their status is currently. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. unusual that somebody would wow. file this, though, yeah. if they haven't completely been um, discharged yet. Ah. And so this is, I think, uh, somewhat unusual that yeah. he is um, on this paid administrative leave status. Sure. But I think in terms of the value to the school district, it's a real problem to have somebody basically on admi paid administrative leave, not functioning for the good of the, you know, of the district, right. and still retaining a salary right. while they're also suing, you know, the organization. So I think it's incumbent upon the board to try to deal with this quickly mm -hmm. um, and s settle the matter or address the allegations quickly so that it doesn't draw out until long litigation. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, for sure. Senator, let's get to the juicy stuff. There's an allegation <laughs> that's, you know, uh, Governor Susana Martinez and uh, Education Secretary Scandera met with him physically was not particularly impressed and, dis and, and influenced the decision to not make him be the deputy superintendent. I gotta think, you know, I don't know if we keep logs at, the sta at, at our state uh, roundhouse like we do at the White House about who goes in and out of the building. I gotta f imagine there's a way to f find out if the man actually met with these people he or not at did. some point. He said he met with them. Well, he said he did, but th there's other people saying it never happened. You know, well, so it's, it's tricky. I think that the back to the suit, the suit mm -hmm. does charge Scandera, Martinez, as well as the APS board right. and the district um, with, uh, you know, improperly uh, putting him on leave after he did this action, which was to save taxpayers' money. That's the classic whistleblower suit. Mm. What's unusual about it is the connection between the governor and the uh, education secretary. And mm. what makes that connection is the email, is the email that the was sent, the text, right, right, the text that was sent ineptly by um, uh, Valentino to Moya, and it was supposed to be for Scandera. No one is answering why was he communicating with Scandera? Mm -hmm. Why was he communicating with anybody about him going after somebody in his own shop? Yeah, but al although he, right. uh, Mr. Valentino says that he was, uh, in, it was incumbent upon him to right. contact uh, that's, the, right. the, the, I, that's the wrong the there is nothing that requires that and that uh, that is very very suspect it, it looks very much like this was a good old boys operation uh, that van, uh, that uh, Valentino knew uh, knew Scandera and also um, and also obviously uh, Jason Martinez was was uh, being protected yeah. well th this is steeped in politics shock Right, you know, right. New Mexico <laughs> politics is involved in this. I mean, mm -hmm. the uh, the law firm that filed the uh, whistleblower lawsuit, 
uh, is, uh, uh, has Brian Egolf as one of its partners. He's the House Minority mm -hmm. uh, Floor Leader mm -hmm. of the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Also, um, New Mexico Political Journal pointed out something that was interesting this week, that in that lawsuit, Moya says that Valentino offered him the Martinez job on May 9th, but on May 6th, in the Albuquerque Journal, there's a quote from that says or a story that says the job's already been offered to Martinez mm. so there's mm. that issue as well but I think the, the you know the fact that he did contact or sent this inept text to uh, mm. Hannah Scandera brings up a whole raft of issues. Mm -hmm. Why would you imagine Dan, Daniel Foley um, that the governor's office would mention Bill Richardson and try to hang Bill Richardson around Mr. Noya's, uh, Moya's neck somehow as, as being a hack, as being just a, a lot of different, that language, was that language surprising to oh, you? Why, why language, was that? Surprising that this governor was tying anything to Bill Richardson? Yeah. No, it's not surprising. I mean. Why would they do that? Well, I mean, what, what governor Richardson, purpose would that because serve? Because Governor Richardson, whether you like him, dislike him, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It, there's a negative connotation with him right now. Still is, I think, in New Mexico, that he's kind of the dirty guy, that but he does the back room deals. Mr. Moya? Mr. Moya worked for him. Mr. Moya worked for A him. lot of people have worked for Mr. Right. Oh, so, I mean, but if you're going to, but Gene, you know, if you say that, if you say that this governor is kind of got some baggage and Gene worked for that governor, it's the exact same thing, Gene, when they talk about Heather Wilson. They go back and say, well, you worked for Heather Wilson, so sure. somehow you're related to the sure. shenanigans that went on. I think that's the, 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 the thing they're trying to craft. I do think, um, I think it's interesting the timing of the Moya lawsuit, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> that, you know, he got put on administrative leave, nothing was said by him, he kind of went dark for a few days, this Valentino thing blows up, then he comes out with this lawsuit now that's in line with all the stuff that Moya, uh, that, that Valentino has now done with Martinez and all this other stuff. I, I think for anybody to think that the governor and the secretary of education, um, you know, are running around the state of New Mexico telling superintendents who they should hire as their deputy, I, I think is, they're the same people that wrap their head in tinfoil and wait for the UFOs to come back. But I, is, is it really a much of a stretch? I think it's a huge stretch. Think that? I think it's really? a huge stretch. Now, yeah. do I think it's a stretch to say that if you have a meeting with someone and and you say, hey, what do you think of Dee Dee Feldman? And, and Rob says, oh, I don't like Dee Dee Feldman. Dee Dee Feldman. But that, that could happen in a conversation. Then whatever I do with that information, mm -hmm. I do. I just find it hard to believe that Scandera and the, the secretary and the governor are sitting around saying, how do we get ourselves involved in hiring Moya, firing Moya? Mm -hmm. They clearly don't like him. I mean, the guy's, you know, as the CFO of APS was posting pictures and stuff that he has said that nobody in that position should be doing to any governor or any secretary of education. So there's clearly no love lost between them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for, for, the, for, for him to be doing what he's doing, I, I think I think the loser in this deal is I think there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out kind of along with the discovery thing. There's going to be a lot of things, I think, that come up about Mr. Moya during this whistleblower lawsuit that I think he's going to regret the day he did this. I'm still in the language from the, from the administration for a second, Laura, because it seems to me, you know, there's a time to get into a fight and there's a time to step back and let the locals sort of handle it for a while. It seemed to me the, the administration would have been better served to just kind of step back for a little bit, let the process kind of move. They inserted themselves right in the process, and I think for a lot of folks it was a huge log in the fire of suspicion. Like, why would you act so, so quickly if there wasn't something there about this allegation? Does that make sense in your mind? Yeah, how people think absolutely. That? Yeah. Um, you know, I think back to the question that you asked Dan about whether you know it's surprising that they um, connected Moya to Richardson. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't surprise me because that's really a, a that's a line from their playbook during the election, and mm -hmm. I think that this administration has definitely shown itself to be good at politicking, not good at administering mm -hmm. or governing. Mm -hmm. And so that's you know that's typical. You, you oh well the Richardson thing worked. We're going to connect him to Richardson, and that everybody's going to. The yeah. problem is that when you when you peel back the layers, you see that that. This administration has also has gotten very involved in, you know, personnel issues and detailed issues of who gets hired where, right. and um, you know whether officially or unofficially. There's a lot of influence that's being peddled. And may, may I and throw same, in, including the school board, this yes, last school board go around, exactly. that's, right? That's, it was highly been politicized. Publicly, mm -hmm. getting right. involved, spending pretty big bucks yeah, for a very low-profile election hired. for Albuquerque Public mm -hmm. Schools, and right. and getting their major critic. Right. Uh, tossed Out. off the board. That's not yeah. a low profile, right. but it's not mm -hmm. a low profile election. I mean, 
education has been uh, a cornerstone of every governor, regardless, you know, in my lifetime, they all talk about education. And here you got the largest school board in the state with a very vocal critic of your of your policies, whether you agree with them or not. You got a very vocal critic of your policies. But shouldn't policies. that be left alone to the locals no, to parse that is. out? Uh, Gene, this this is isn't the, the voters' time. job it's to that's parse right. that out? How did the voters not parse it out, Gene? Well, and other than the fact only three percent of us showed okay, up. Okay, but how did the voters? Yeah, however, I mean, the, there's good. enough mm -hmm. going on at the state level with issues that that deserve her attention, deserve this administration's attention, that they should be leaving all of this to the local board. There's right. a there's a process. The Constitution, right. too. Yeah, there should but, be a separation there. You can't separate politics from this. I mean, and that's what's going to be a, a major portion of this. And also, Mr. Mm -hmm. Moya, two years ago, sends out a tweet of, uh, uh, of a teacher holding up a sign of uh, Hannah Scandera and Governor Martinez mm -hmm. with fangs. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think so anyone's looking at the politics though, in this I mean, I mean, shock. I, I, I love listening to the political Gene, people the saying they can't though, believe the governor did this. Uh -huh. That we see here. We're a little over time, so quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, as quickly as I can. I mm -hmm. mean, APS is is going to have to do a presentation to Standard and Poor on yeah. their bond rating mm -hmm. coming up mm -hmm. right. in, on September second. And all of this, all the scandal, especially given the fact that it's the chief financial officer that was, you know, has filed now this whistleblower lawsuit, yes. all of this is going to affect the presentation. It's going to be issues mm. that come up, and it could affect their bond rating, wow. which then could affect um, the cost of them being able to borrow uh, in the future. Which is, what, right. huge which is what Valentino mentioned on the That's right. bad text. Up next, we look at heroin addiction and treatment here in New Mexico.